<coughs> okay, well, I guess I'm ready to go. Uh, potluck at the church. And I made green chili. Oh, speaky breaks. Okay. All right. So, what's there to talk about today? Uh, uh, apologies to Grassroots Gravel and everybody else. I, uh, I don't even know who I am anymore. I, uh, seem to be making a lot of mistakes, or at least I'm making mistakes that I'm aware of, anyway. And, uh, all I can say is I, uh, I apologize. I do. It is what it is. I saw myself in the in the in the interview and uh just shocked at how bad I look. I, uh up close and in the light I pretty rough. <laughs> hey dude. But you know I don't get my teeth done and I don't get any of that stuff done. I don't want any of it done. I don't want nothing to do with any of it. it scares the hell out of me. I, I'm not looking for an early grave or a late one. I'm just looking. I don't know really what to say. I don't know. I love my tricycles. I sure do. I guess I love my tricycles more than I love people. This kind of seems to be my thing, is the love of people. is a hard one for me to get by, I guess. I don't know. Loving animals, easy. Loving people, that's a different deal. I don't know. Loving myself, I guess. Loving everyone else. Like the song says, if we honor seniority, we honor ourselves. If we love our brothers and sisters, then we love ourselves. And if we fight for democracy, Actual democracy, not bullshit. But, uh, when we fight for democracy, we fight for ourselves. This world's so fucked up, and I, I'm fucked up too. I am nobody to judge anybody. I've been seeing myself, and I'm like, oh boy, you poor wretch. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny as hell. Not really living my life. Oh no. I watch bouncies. We've got green chili. The potluck. Right now, a little bit more. Yeah.
Oh, well, we'll just have to smooth it out. Oh, boy. That's the nice thing about trikes is, uh, well, not so nice. If the road's slanted, then they're, the trike's slanted. That's, uh, bikes, I, now I see some things. I always say, you know, trikes 50% better than a bike. Four out of five of your moments agree. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Uh, don't ignore that fifth mama. Uh, she might have a point. And uh, don't ignore that tenth man. He might have a point. Anyway, that fourth, that fifth mama, better off to maybe listen to her at least before you make any rash decisions. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you though, a trike cannot be beaten by a bike as far as carrying cargo, which that, to me, is it really worth going anywhere if you can't take anything with you? Just think about that for a little bit there. And then you rethink that. That's why four out of five mamas, you know, that's what I'm talking about. You, the democracy, it's a, it's a clear majority. There you go. That's not to say that democracy is always right, but in the light that it, we all have a say-so, it's always right. And anything else is wrong if we don't have our individual say-so. That's the freaking truth. Everybody's been getting corralled around. Democracy is a terrible thing. It's like democracy is the only thing. That's why they don't like it. That's why they raise everybody up hating it. It's because actual democracy. And that's why they try and act like they've got a democracy. But representative democracy is what we have. And that is not democracy. It's the exact opposite. Democracy is rule by the majority for the majority. But when you elect someone to vote for you and you no longer have a vote, you've given your vote over to them, your representative. Well, when, you know, millions of people give their votes to one representative, their votes no longer count at all. Only his vote counts. Or hers, or whatever, the representative's vote. This is critical information. <laughs> that is ruled by the minority, for the minority. And the majority is just being conned again. That's the deal. <sighs> oh boy, you got a lot of work there. That's awesome. Right on. Uh, come down and help me out. Yeah, I should help out Josh. Help out all the kids. I'm having a hell of a time. <sighs> I'm praying for everybody, but I need to be doing stuff instead of just praying about it. Ay, ay, ay. Something that'll matter in a person's life and change the course of their life and make it better. These are the things that we should be doing. what anymore I was watching the performance me and Ray the other night Wednesday night and uh, I gotta say that was some of, some of my best work it really touched me listening to it and watching it and it really touched now after seeing all this stuff with grassroots gravel It all is what it is. <laughs> uh, 
met Richard down here at the bottom of this hill last time, last Sunday. Wonder if he'll be there again. <sighs> I always wonder stuff like that, you know. When you have some kind of random thing happen, it makes you wonder why it happened. Ah, <sighs> well. Everything's like that for me. <laughs> Every day. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Uh, where the day ranges itself for me. And I'm pretty stubborn about doing anything. Yeah, I'm pretty lazy. Sometimes. I don't know who I am anymore. There's a good doggy. I'm Charlie Fetty, whatever that is. Got a ding -ling Carla. She should be going to church. Oh, that's the truth of it. Mm, but I understand, who knows? I took my breaks from it too. That's weird. I may take a break from it. At least this winter, kind of maybe. During the winter time, hibernation time for me is what I'm thinking. I need to go to bed. to say I enjoy watching the video of the race that part of it that was the good part of it for me I was all grins when I was actually keeping up <laughs> nothing no fool like an old fool anyway yeah, grin like a cramp grin like a clam <laughs> uh, hilarious I don't really want to see the rest of it myself. I don't know what I'm going to find there, to be honest. I don't really remember the... I just remember little pieces of everything on that trip. And I just... When I see it, the one-legged gal, she was so nice to me, and I, I just... I wasn't there to... I didn't... I was just an idiot again. I just can't help myself. Anyway, I sure regret not taking some time and getting to know her. I just, that wasn't why I was there. I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to find there. And nothing was like what I thought it was going to be like. I don't know what I thought I was going to get into. I guess I didn't know. Anyway, it is what it is. Like I say, that was all on a whim, just like everything else. Every day says what it's gonna, what I gotta do, tells me. Sometimes it's radical weird shit. <laughs> and some days, it's the nine little things that make the biggest difference. And if I miss the call, how heartbroken am I? After church, I'm going to go see Josh, check in on him. Maybe he's just sleeping. My nephew called me last night. No, the night. He shouldn't be out in the wee hours like that for no good reason. Just find trouble. That's all it's looking for trouble. I know I've done it too. But it's the shit. Anyway. I missed the call. Yeah. <laughs> 
smell and worry as hell about him. Damn it. Probably asleep, but who knows. I'd hate to think what my parents went through with me living in that school bus and partying all over town and doing all this, getting in fights, and what not, and who knows what. I can't judge anybody. I really can't. I guess that's the good part about me, if there's any good part. There's a good doggies. There's a good doggies. <sighs> well, such is life for a mildly retarded old man. Face it. Own it. Be who I am. I'm Charlie Fetty. I don't care if you like it or not. I don't care if I like it or not. <laughs> that's the scary part. Well, maybe that's all I care about. Who knows? Who knows? What the hell? Without a doubt, the camera won't be turned on or something, and all this will be lost, <sighs> like everything else. The race goes away. There's a kitty. There's a good kitty. I got my kitty back. Midnight indigo. She was gone for three days, and this morning when I was feeding the chickens, <laughs> I heard a faint meow. And I did, I thought it might be a, one of the kittens or something, and I thought it was in the chicken house, but she was trying to get over that fence of mine and having a hell of a time. Old gal, struggling for a life. Anyway, it was nice to read a little reunion with her. And I was able to get her off the fence and bring her in and love her a little bit and get her fed and everything. So that was wonderful. Been praying for everybody kind of uniquely, like Grandma used to pray for them by actual name and you know and everything. I'm trying to remember everybody and kind of include everybody. I'm just maybe I'm going through changes again. I don't know. Maybe life is just constant changes. Some good and some bad. I know it's nice to be able to go up this hill with so little effort. I'm pedaling, but I'm not pedaling any harder than I would be. <laughs> That's the nice thing I had. The one advantage I had is hills or no hills. It was all the same for me with the motor. My, uh, my, uh, my contribution, I still gave it everything I had. And I, and I tried to save the batteries, believe it or not. I mean, I didn't just... You know, let it all go. All 11 horse, Charlie horsepower. <laughs> Can't just turn 11 Charlie horsepower loose all at once. You know, you gotta, you gotta ease into it. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, Yep, the, the ones that won did exactly what my plan was. My plan was to keep an average speed of over 15 miles an hour, between 15 and 20 miles an hour, and I thought I was capable of doing that. And even using the batteries like twice as much as I usually do, I still couldn't do that on the gravel. The gravel is the whole thing. And on the pavement, man, they really, I, I thought the pavement I would have a, a certain uh, advantage. Oh no, 
Those bikes have got way less resistance. They just flew by me, like 35 miles an hour. And the ones that won actually did what I wanted, thought I was going to do, was keep an average above 15, between 15 and 20 miles an hour. And they was over 20 miles an hour, the ones who won. I mean, wow. Wow. So, anyway, I've been graciously invited to come back next year. There's a good doggy. And I intend to. But I intend to be better prepared this time. I'm still going to try and win. I'm going to try and enjoy the people a little more and not see them just as competition. <laughs> people. That was. I spent the whole race passing people, and that's all I was about. It was just everybody I saw was just somebody else I needed to pass. There's some good doggies. There's some good doggies. Anyway, we're here. That's good. Gotta not spill the green chili. <laughs> right at the front door, that would be bad. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Are you Leslie? Oh. Okay. Keep my ugly face, my ugly mug out of the picture. Here's what I'm thinking. It's probably the best deal after watching that. But we had a wonderful meal and a wonderful service. And everything's awesome. Uh, I gotta remember to stop by Sandy's and help her with her air conditioner on the way home. Don't forget. Okay. There's a story there. Hi, Stormy. Hi, Lyric and Lorkin. Hey. <laughs> They're trapped in there. The kids is trapped in there. Oh, no. <laughs> They're trapped in the car, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you remind me of my brothers and sisters. You know what? I had brothers and sisters, and we used to get in fights and stuff, but I don't like doing that anymore. Okay, you can ring the bell here. Ready? You can push that button there. Or that there. Yeah, you gotta push it that way. I told him you were learning the song. We'll have to bring them. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta hear the good, the bad, and the ugly, or the, or the. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, they're so awesome. <laughs> yeah, they've been learning it good. <laughs> I told them they remind me of my, my, my three brothers. My, I had two brothers and a sister. Anytime we was in the back seat alone together, it was fight was... <laughs> oh, my God, they're horrible. <laughs> but they're, they're good kids. They're not like us. They're good oh, yeah. kids. They're good kids. Little, little unruly, like kids children. <laughs> yeah, like any kids, I guess. I guess all kids are pretty much the same, huh? All right, you guys, be good, good girls, okay? We'll see you later. We'll see you next, see you next Sunday. You know, there's only one way to ride a tricycle, for a grown person to ride a tricycle. One way. Like a boss. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Some folks have a hard time driving a tricycle. It's not the same as a bicycle, you no. know. They say you uh, you drive a bicycle, but you got to steer a tricycle. If you want to make a turn, you can't just lean. Yeah. You can lean all you want. I'm going to go straight across. Anyway, I'm going to head over to Sandy's, I guess. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> Don't give up. Looks like she's given up on the bicycle. She's had enough of it. Don't give up, it'll be good. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, let's see. What can we talk about? Uh, it was a wonderful meal, wonderful service. Getting into revelations now. I gotta talk to you all about some of that stuff, you know. Everybody says they believe in the Bible. Everybody says all this. Well, I'm just going to say it. No, I'm not going to say it. Anyway, all this. We'll just say that. We'll just say it. everybody says all this. You know, they, they believe everything in the Bible. But except I notice there's some things they don't want to believe. They don't want to talk about. It. They just, it's too much for them. They can't handle it. Synagogue of Satan is one of those things. And today's circumstances as it relates to the end times, you know, everybody believes in the Bible, believes there's a great possibility, at least, that we're in the end times, if they don't actually just honestly believe that that's what, where we're at. I'm somewhere in there. Anyway, uh, regarding all that, how many of you people who actually believe the Bible actually think that God's side in this thing is going to be the ones with all the tanks and airplanes and jets and bombs, fire bombs, and and poisons and and uh, everything weaponized and warlike. Does any of you? Does any of you who believe the Bible actually think? The God side is the ones that's going to be killing all the babies with freaking jets and tanks. Unarmed people, unarmed women and children. How many of you actually honestly believe that that's God's side? And, and I gotta say, you know, you, you're so misled if you do. If you honestly think that, you see, God's going to prove that God is God against all odds. There's going to be no doubt. There's going to be no questions who's winning this thing when, when God decides to win it. And there's going to be no doubt that what God's going to win is going to be the worst adversary possible. The worst, rottenest, cheatinest. The ones with the tanks and the jets and the drones against un, unarmed people. Those are the ones that God is going to defeat. How could you anybody be so half stupid to think that it's going to be the opposite? And I want you to all look what's going on in the Middle East and in Ukraine right now. All the Nazi Jews, the white Jews, Ashkenazi Jews, the white fake Jews. White Jews are just fake Jews. If you're white and you say you're a Jew, you're a liar. 
And it's going to be hard for you to face up to that. I, I know, I know. But hey, it is what it is. You have to repent. You're living a lie. You say you are children of Abraham, but you are not. You're lying in the face of God and all creation. White Jews are the liars. All they do is lie. They lie to themselves and they believe their own lies. There's a good doggish. There's a good doggish. Yes, sir. Good doggish. Look at the good doggish. There's a good doggish. There's a good doggish. I got a good cage. They got good doggish. Anyway. So you look at what's going on over there. You've got the white Jews, the white Nazi. Ashkenazi Jews, the Nazis. This is the Nazis. That's where the word comes from. <laughs> Which came first, the chicken or the egg? The Ashkenazi came first, and the Nazi is just a derivative of that word. The white Jews, the Ashen white Jews, the liars who say they are children of Abraham, but they lie. The synagogue of Satan in the Bible, in your Bible that you believe in, you say you believe in. But somehow you think that that means backing the ones with all the jets and the planes against the unarmed kids and mothers. Really? Really? Wow, how fucked up are you? How about you repent and maybe rethink that situation just a little bit? Now I want you to consider Yemen. Now, when they invented the letter J in the 1500s, that's where Jesus and Jews and Judea, Jerusalem, Jeremiah, John, and on and on. All the words with a J, that's, that's another, another pronunciation at least. Anyway, they, they invented the, the letter J. So anyway, Y's, H's, and J's are very related. J's being the latecomers to the party in the 1500s. Anyway, Yemen is actually the, the, the true Yemen are right there in their name. They're the Yemen. They're the, the Yah, Yah, the, the God, the Yah, um, um, Yaman. Um, they are the ones that, they're the, they're the actual Hebrew. That's, uh, there's, and, and I've talked to people who live over there. I, my brother-in-law lives over there and his whole family. And, and he's confirmed to me that that's one thing that isn't in doubt about it, who's the actual Hebrew and who isn't. Yemenis are known throughout the whole region. They are actual, no doubt, children of Abraham. Okay? Nobody debates that, no matter what their religion is, whether they're Christian or... And that's the other thing. Yemen are Christian. Oh, that's... Uh, I don't know if they're the dominant, but uh, there are a lot of Christians in Yemen. Basically, it might be the whole thing. Anyway, Yemen has turned around every army that has tried to take it. Every army. It turned back the Romans. It turned back the Mongols. It turned back the Christian Crusaders. Every army has been stopped at Yemen. The Yemenis are the poorest and smallest of nations, yet they have the more whatever it is that makes humans special. The Yemenis have it. They stand up. They're the only ones in the world who stood up and actually did something against the genocide in Gaza, a bunch of the killing of all these babies. And in Revelations, we were just talking about that today, about the woman and the travails of, have, have been, have, of bearing the child. The same thing as when uh, Moses and Jesus were born. They killed all the babies trying to kill them. They're trying to kill the Messiah, the Mashiach, coming back. They're trying to stop the Mashiach. And they can't get to Yemen. Yemen is the one, is the, the place where the, the woman bearing the child is taken, is what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, my interpretation is uh, obvious to me the Yemenis and that's that's where the that's where everything's going to stop again like it always does like it will up until the actual return of the Christ which I suspect will be coming in about 27 2800 in the 2800s probably but, uh, 
this is every every time we go through this is like a, a rehearsal for the big show at the end when when Jesus uh, Yeshua uh, the Christ uh, Krishna Krish, Krishna um, Jesus Horus uh, all the different names, you know, everybody argues about names, and that's the silly part, which is, unri you know, it's so ridiculous. Anyway, they, they, you know, Dios, that's not my God, you know, <laughs> Allah, that's not my God. Well, those are just another words for God. It's like, yeah, God's not my God. It's, it's so stupid that people just don't even know. I don't know how stupid I am. I'm just, my eyes are kind of opening up, and I'm realizing how stupid we all are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was by design. They, they, that's why they give us all the shots from the board. They want people to be stupid. They don't want smart people. You can't make smart people do stupid shit. It's a lot harder anyway. Anybody who can't see this stuff, I don't know what you're looking at. I don't know what you're looking at it with, but it's pretty freaking obvious what's going on here. The Bible, anyway, biblically, which, like it or not, you know, this is the way that we're doing it. And all you who believe in the Bible, well, parts of the Bible that you choose, pick and choose, you ignore the synagogue of Satan, you ignore the true, the, 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 the true, Israelites, the, the true Hebrew, you ignore them. They are being slaughtered by the Ashkenazi Jews, the Nazis, who own your government, who own the world, who own everything, who have all the tanks and the planes and the satellites and every, every advantage possible. And you think that's going to be God's side, the ones who are changing the genders of our children because their Talmud says there's eight genders, not two. You, you also so got yourself so worked up into supporting the real, real evil guys, the real, the real bad. You're even giving them everything they need. It's so sad. Anyway, I hope somebody watches this and I hope they actually listen to it and think, use their brain and read the, read the scriptures in a whole different light and understand the lies that you've been told. And the whole thing, why do people lie? Why is, why is the, what is the purpose of lies? This is a good question that everybody needs to understand. The main, 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 main reason of any lie is to get people to do things they would not normally do. If you can convince them that something is true that isn't, you can make them do things as if they were in another circumstance. That they're not actually in. That's the whole reason for lies. That's why the primary lie at the Garden of Eden, when the first lie, the original lie upon which all lies are built and live, thrive because they're be embedded in the biggest lie of ever the original lie that there is somewhere else to go that there's some other creation some other planet some other heaven some other hell some other place some other dimension some other universe some other God that's what the heart of this thing is everybody wants there to be another God they can't handle they just can't really deal with that. But there's only one, only one. All the rest is just bullshit stories that people tell each other. Anyway, don't get me started. You'll be sorry. Which one of these? This one's her house.
24 pages. 